In this video, I'd like to talk about factoring polynomials when they have common factors. So for this one, it helps to start with an example. And in this problem, we need to factor the polynomial by its greatest common monomial factor. Remember, a monomial is just a one-term expression. So we're going to be able to factor out some one-term expression. And remember, factoring is just essentially the reverse of the distribution property, or at least factoring with common factors. So remember with the distributed property, if you have three times two X plus four, let me change colors. Then when we distribute, we multiply the three into both of these, and we get six X plus 12. Now, factoring is the reverse of this. We're basically starting from here and wanna go back here. And this idea has many different uses, which we'll see in future videos, but right now we just wanna get an understanding of how to do this. So when you're factoring, so let's say we're starting here, you're looking for what is the biggest number that would divide into both of these. Because remember, it's the reverse of distribution and distribution is multiplication. So factoring, we're gonna think in terms of division. What could we divide into both of these numbers? And we know that three would divide into both six and 12. Now there aren't any X's in both of them. There's an X here, but not here. And so we're not gonna be able to factor out a variable, but we can factor out a number because like I mentioned, three does divide into both of these. And so when you factor out the three, we're essentially dividing each of these terms by three. So six X divided by three is two X and 12 divided by three is four. And so that's how you get back to what we started with. And you can always check these by just redistributing. And if you get back what you started with, then you know that you're on the right track. So let's do this problem here. Let me make a little more space and I'll rewrite it. So we have three B five or B to the fifth plus 15 B to the fourth minus 18 B to the seventh. And for this one, I would recommend starting with the numbers first, though you can start with the variables first. But we'll see out of these coefficients, the three, the 15, and the minus 18, what is the biggest number that can divide into all three of those? And if you divide them each by three, you'll be still left with some whole numbers. So we can factor out a three, but now we wanna consider the variable terms. So b to the fifth, b to the fourth, and b to the seventh. And basically, what is the largest number of b's that we can divide by so that we don't end up with any fractions. And since b to the fourth is the lowest power of b, that is the most that we're gonna be able to factor out. So we can also factor out a b to the fourth. And when we do this, now essentially we're just dividing each of these terms by three b to the fourth. And another way to think about it is you're essentially pulling out three b to the fourth from each of these. So you can ask yourself what you would have left. And from here, when we pull out the three or divide by three, we're left with a one and we're dividing B to the fifth by B to the fourth. We're pulling out four of these B's and so we'd have one left over. So this would be B to the first. And here we're dividing 15 by three, so that would be five. And we're dividing B to the fourth by B to the fourth. Or we're pulling out all four of those B's. So there would be none left. And essentially we just have five here or plus five. And then from the minus 18 B to the seventh, we're dividing minus 18 by three. So that would be minus six. And we're taking out four of these seven B's. And so we'd have three left. Or essentially B to the seventh divided by B to the fourth is B to the third. And at this point, once you think you have an answer, you wanna check it. And to check it, like I mentioned, we're just gonna redistribute this. So we're gonna take this three B to the fourth and multiply it into all three terms. And so when we do that, three B to the fourth times one B, well, we're essentially just multiplying B to the fourth times B to the first, which is B to the fifth. And three B to the fourth multiplied by positive five, three times five would be 15. And the B to the fourth will travel along with us. And then last, three B to the fourth times minus six B to the third, three times minus six would be minus 18, and B to the fourth times B to the third, now you have seven Bs multiplied together, so we can rewrite that as B to the seventh. So we got back what we started with, 
And so we can feel confident that this right here is the correct answer. And you can check a little bit further because once you do factor out, you do want to make sure that there's nothing left in common in these. And you can see that's true because if you look at their numbers, well, one is the biggest number that you can divide by here, and that won't change anything. So we can't pull out any more numbers. And then this term right here doesn't have a B in it. So we can't pull out any more Bs. And so that's another way to know that this is our final answer here. And you can see we did pull out a common monomial factor. This right here is our monomial. It's a one term expression that we were able to factor out. So this right here is what you put in the box. We have 3B to the fourth. And I'll just write this as B. Actually, I'm going to write this in standard form. So I'll put the highest power term first. So minus 6B cubed. Then we have plus 1B or just plus B and plus 5. So let's keep going on these so we can get some extra practice. So here we have a rectangle below with an area of 6 n to the 4th plus 20 n to the 3rd plus 14 n squared. The width of the rectangle is equal to the greatest common monomial factor of these numbers here, or this polynomial. And we need to know what is the length and width of this rectangle. So essentially what this question is asking us to do is to factor this polynomial here, this 6n to the 4th plus 20n cubed plus 14n squared. Since when we factor it out, the number that we pull out, that common monomial factor, that will be the width. And then whatever is left on the inside of that parentheses, that will be the length. So looking at these numbers, you can see that they each are even numbers. 6, 20, and 4, they're all even numbers, so we can pull out a 2. And you can notice that in terms of the n terms, that n squared is the smallest. So the most amount of n's that we can pull out would be 2. And when we do this, we're dividing now. So 6 divided by 2 would be 3. And n to the 4th divided by n squared, well, we'd have 2 left. We essentially pulled 2 of them out, 2 of these n's, from each of these. And 20 divided by 2 would be 10. And when we pull out the two ends, we'd be left with 1. And here, 14 divided by 2 would be 7. And we pulled both those ends out, so we don't have any left. And again, you want to check this. So we can say check with distribution. So that we can re-multiply this out and just make sure that we did this correctly. So 2n squared times 3n squared would be 6n to the 4th. 2n squared times 10n would be 20n cubed. And 2n squared times positive 7 would be 14n squared, which is exactly what we expected. Now, you also want to check that you were able to pull everything that you could out. And looking at the numbers, 3, 10, and 7 do not share anything in common, since both 3 and 7 are prime numbers, and 10 is only divisible by 2 and 5. And out of the ends, we don't have any ends on this constant term. So there's no way that we can pull an n out from all three terms. And so we can feel confident that this is the right answer. And remember, the number that we pulled out, this common mon monomial factor, this was our width. So that is our width, which means that what's on the inside of the parentheses is our length because we know that when we multiply width times length, we get the area of the rectangle, which is this polynomial. So you can call this the area, and the area is always equal to the width times the length when you're dealing with rectangles. So in the box for our width, we would put the 2n squared, that's the greatest common monomial factor of this polynomial, and the length is what was left over, this 3n squared, plus 10n, plus 7. And that should make sense that the length has three different terms because you're going to have three different boxes here where the width is only creating one form of multiplication. So you have 3n squared, 10n, and positive 7. And over here, you have the 2n squared. And of course, you can check it by just visually finding the area of these. 3n squared and 2n squared does make 6n to the fourth and so on. 